My name is Alex Page, and I'm the CEO of Nillion. Um, really excited to be sharing with you all what we've been working on. Uh, it's been about a year since we started this project, and we've been working with a really incredible team, um, which I'll introduce you to towards the end of this. Um, but Nillion, in essence, is new internet infrastructure um, that we believe will pave the way to uh, the next wave in crypto. And to, to understand what I mean by that, we first need to talk about what creates waves in crypto. And Bitcoin, of course, is the original wave in crypto. It brought decentralization to the forefront um, and cemented blockchain as a core piece of infrastructure to enable decentralized networks to exist. And we saw other cryptocurrencies pop up around the same time that were improving on the efficiency of what Bitcoin has created. But blockchain what became cemented as this core aspect of how decentralization. Um, it would be a part of the crypto ecosystem. And Ethereum was really the next major expansion in infrastructure uh, that created waves. And the programmability and smart contracts that Ethereum brought um, was a catalyst for creating you know, massive waves. First one being around tokenization, where you could essentially create a token and, and create an ecosystem around an entire project. It also ignited DeFi and NFTs, but it created a new paradigm where where running program and having programmability on top of blockchain created new opportunities and new use cases. But what will create the next wave? Um, and what pieces of infrastructure are, are necessary to be the catalyst to create the next wave? For us, we see secure computation as the catalyst for the next wave. Uh, it's something that we take for granted in Web 2 and has been really lagging behind in Web 3. But being able to have fast, private computation as a part of any decentralized ecosystem and being able to use private data, we believe is a key piece of expanding the opportunities in crypto and will be a catalyst for the next wave to come. And that's where Nillion's innovation is really focused. Um, we've been working with a, a technology that's been around for decades called Secure Multiparty Computation or MPC. Um, and MPC is exactly what it sounds like. It allows multiple parties to run computations on pieces of secure data um, and come to a result. Um, and it sounds a lot like decentralization. It sounds like a great piece of infrastructure to, to work with in the world of crypto. But it hasn't gained massive adoption. And probably the only use case you've heard of um, that utilizes MPC is Fireblocks. And the reason is MPC has one critical flaw. It's very slow. Uh, MPC can only support very simple computations um, before the processing time increases exponentially. And it's been a huge limiting factor in utilizing multi-party computation in any kind of decentralized ecosystem. And this is where you know, the generational leap and the invention of Nillion has, comes to the surface. This is where we've created a, a real opportunity. With Nillion's um, uh, invention, we've created a new cryptographic primitive that removes these constraints that MPC was facing before and allows us to provide fast computation and fast processing of information in a decentralized architecture among multiple parties. Um, but along with that, we can also use information theoretic secure as a security standard on our system. And what ITS does is it allows for information to be stored in a quantum proof way. And what I mean by that is that no matter how much computation power you have, no matter how much time you have, you cannot break through the security to the underlying data. But there's something really unique when you combine these two together. And that is the combination of this security standard and the innovation in, in that we've invented in, in Nillion allows for private computation, allows for fast private computation um, to happen where the information itself, the private data that's used in a computation is never compromised and never revealed. And so it can be used in a decentralized and open architecture um, where this private data can now be useful even when other people can see the processes that are going on. And that's really unique and is the foundation that makes up um, the core of what we are building at Nillion. And so Nillion is new internet infrastructure that not only can store private data and protect private data uh, in a way that's uncompromisable, but we can also make that private data useful by using it in computations. We can run computations where the data is never revealed at any point from storage all the way through to results. This brings a, a new opportunity to Web3 
security because having fast private secure computation means that the power and opportunity that exists inside of private data can now come into the Web3 ecosystem. We can have Web3 applications that are using private data where they don't have to worry about it being compromised or storing it on a centralized system. Um, and it's it opens up a whole new potential for use cases that can exist um, in Web3 and use private data. And we see a lot of opportunities um, for, for blockchain um, with this type of, of infrastructure. Um, we can build multi-chain wallets that have no centralized private key, where the private key is never revealed, it's never unsecure, but it can still sign transactions on chain. We can even add in multi-factor authentication methods uh, like biometrics, where the biometric information itself is never unsecured and never sitting on a centralized database somewhere where somebody can access it. We can host NFT metadata so that on-chain ownership of assets can actually be pointed into a network where that NFT or that piece of data is private or gated. We can take personal information like information from financial reports or even on-chain data and put it into a system where we can create decentralized credit scores without all of that information being revealed to some centralized party or being on a centralized system that someone can access it. And we can expand on what Filecoin has done with interplanetary uh, file storage and create new systems like interplanetary security system where we can take information that is stored in the decentralized world but requires a higher level of security and a higher level of privacy and stored in a way where it's essentially uncompromisable. And on top of that, we can build an interplanetary compute system where we can take all of this information in the decentralized world, whether it's private data or not, and run fast and efficient computations on a decentralized architecture and make it useful, make the data, data something that we can actually use to the benefit of anyone in the Web3 ecosystem. We can also build private enclaves for executing private smart contracts or using private inputs um, on public blockchains. Nillion is, is not a blockchain, um, which is quite unique and allows us to really find a way to work across multiple different chains or even between chains. Now, we could act as a communication gateway between different layers and provide interoperability, but we think where the real opportunity is, is acting as an expansion pack on layer ones, where we can increase their uh, functionality um, in their use cases by adding things like private computation or storing private data or using private inputs um, and then leveraging their ecosystems um, by operating and integrating with them as opposed to being another layer between them. But it's not just in Web3 or between chains where there's opportunities um, with, with what Nillion has created. Uh, we can have an impact in Web2 as well in multi-billion dollar industries. The uniqueness of being able to have private data run computations on that data while it's still in its secured form and never having to reveal it throughout that entire process has implications for any area where the privacy and security of data is paramount. An example is being that we can train machine learning algorithms against highly sensitive data like medical records without any centralized party having access to all of the information and without violating privacy regulations. We can allow banks to compare account owner information before a transaction is sent to make sure it isn't fraud, something that wasn't possible before because of privacy regulations that exist. We can uh, support large um, large scale studies or comparisons of siloed data, siloed valuable private data to find trends or glean useful information to change business products or to improve healthcare um, or to you know work on um, on clinical trials. And we can act as a security layer um, for cloud computing that exists outside of a centralized entity like AWS. But while infrastructure is a critical component of getting to a point where there can be any wave, the actual wave itself is inside of ecosystem. Uh, core in infrastructure is simply the catalyst to a wave. And we've seen, we know how important ecosystem is to creating any type of, of wave or you know, use of new technology. And so we've been seeding our ecosystem since the very earliest stages of Nillion over a year ago. In fact, we have several members of our team um, who are helping us build the infrastructure but are then going to be some of the initial builders of use cases on top of our network once the technology is matured to support them. We've been starting partnerships with companies and projects across Web 2 and Web 3 and getting them involved in the conversations on our early roadmap so that we're building tools and uh, libraries and that can help them integrate early and start building and utilizing Nillion early on. 
we've also been cultivating entrepreneurs um, through our what we call our founding entrepreneurs program. Um, that entrepreneurs that have an idea and are very early in building their project, but where million and what our infrastructure can provide is a central part uh, of their product offering. And we've also been looking at each milestone on our uh, development roadmap and focusing on building showcase use cases that can show the developer community the potential of what Nillian can do, as well as building libraries, services, and integrations, which will ultimately wrap up into SDKs so that any developer can take advantage of the potential of what Nillian can do for private information. This potential is what has allowed us to build a, a really incredible team um, that spans across the unicorns of Web 2 and Web 3, from Andrew Misanto, who started Hedera, um, to Conrad Whelan, who is number two employee at Uber um, and founding engineer, uh, Slava Rubin, who is the founder and CEO of Indiegogo, uh, to Mark McDermott, who was leading um, innovations at Nike and helping uh, cultivate entrepreneurs and innovation inside of a Fortune 500 company. Uh, Lindsay, who has just recently joined us and we're really excited to have. Um, and then Miguel, who, is, uh, who has been spending his career uh, building innovative technology inside of information systems and actually has six patents that are governing the flow of information across the transatlantic cable um, right now. And he's the inventor of, of NMC. Um, we've all come together uh, to bring the experience necessary to develop and scale and build ecosystem uh, around innovative technologies. So Nillion is a new internet infrastructure that liberates the potential of private data by providing a decentralized processing layer for fast and private computation. And we can make an impact not just in Web3, but across all areas where private data can be unlocked and valuable. Thanks, Alec, for your presentation. We have a couple of questions that have come through. Question one, what are the downsides and the risks here? It sounds fascinating and like a huge leap forward, but there are always trade-offs. Sure, there are always, there are always trade-offs. Um, I think that, you know, we're the, one of the downsides is definitely that, um, and really thinking of a comparison uh, to something like, you know, a standard AWS. Um, we're talking about situations where, you know, in Web3, we want decentralization, we want open architecture, we want to be, you know, utilizing, um, we want to be utilizing data in a, in a decentralized context, but compared to like an AWS, you know, that type of system will be cheaper. Um, if you're using unsecured data inside of an AWS server, you know, there is going to be a lower cost. Now, not to say that Nillion is expensive, but, you know, for computations where your know, security isn't paramount, this may not be the, the perfect system for utilizing that, but we are, you know, really the place where the most secure types of computation, where we're doing things with like private keys or, or anything that is highly sensitive, then the Nillion network is the best place to be doing that. Question two for you is, is there a Turing complete programming language that can be used to execute arbitrary computation on Nillion? Yeah, I'd have to ask our chief scientist that. Um, we are building our own programming language called Nada um, that that will allow for, for Turing complete computations on our network. Um, but, you know, can, for executing arbitrary transactions, I don't know if there's a, another one specifically, but that would be for our chief scientist. I'd pass that along to him and get back to you. Well, I'll take down the name of um, who wrote that question down so we can get back. Cool. Uh, next question is, uh, can you compare Nillian's computation speed with technologies that take computation offline? Sure. So we're very close to, uh, to the speeds of, of a client server system. Um, it's going to be it's slightly more simply because the number of steps that are taking place where you're moving data onto a network computation is taking place um, and then moving uh, data off uh, that can increase the the time but we're quite close on the actual execution to what a, a central uh, server can do okay and the next question is how close is uh, the tech to testnet or prime time use well, um, so we're we're still quite early stages. This is greenfield technology, which which does take a, a, a lot of time, and there are a lot of uh, technical decisions that we do have to make. But I would say we're really focused on by the end of this year being in a place where we have a prototype devnet in place. Now that doesn't mean we're ready for prime time, but it does mean that the mathematics that I've been talking about here is being implemented in code, and we have a network that's running that where we can start testing some of the initial ideas and initial products against it. I would say you know testnet is probably about a year away um, before we would be we'd be looking at bringing in people from the outside. Okay, and final two questions. Uh, question one here is: What are the anticipated hardware and storage requirements for a node? So um, yeah, we can. I mean, we can support pretty much. Um, uh, there isn't going to be anything that is specifically unique uh, in order to be 
a node on our network in terms of hardware um, or storage. But like, you know, anything, whether it's, it's AWS to your computer, you know, the faster your processor is, the more computation you can do, the more, you know, memory that you have available, the more, the larger things that you can handle, we'll be in a very similar boat um, where, you know, faster processing, higher hardware requirements, you know, AWS server potentially that has um, um, higher speed limits is going to be able to just do more work. Um, but there's nothing where, you know, somebody would be, has to meet some sort of minimum requirement in order to, um, or minimum hardware requirement at least to be a part of the network. And last final question. What programming language does Nalene's tech use? Is it compatible with EVM? So we're building um, we're, we're building our own language right now that we call Nada, um, but we are going to be building a compiler uh, to so that we can make it compatible with EVM, and we're also going to be adding more compatibility. So the goal is to to have a compiler where we can stretch into um, all types of different um, coding languages and, and different layer ones. Awesome! I think that's all the questions for uh, you today. Thank you, Alex, for your time.